Sam from Road Trail Run here. I want to give you my video review of the Coros Vertex Adventure Watch. This $600 watch joins the Coros Apex last year, a really fine uh, and also a fine watch, but this is a heavier duty uh, new entry from newcomer Coros. So let's take a look. The watch has a uh, titanium bezel on top of case and a fiber rear. Um, it also has a sapphire crystal with a diamond-like coating. Uh, it's mainly operated through its digital knob, which is you spin, and then you can also press. So here we're looking at heart rate. We can scroll back and forth. And then with a press of the back button here, you can go back. Uh, we've got our barometric altimeter data, and we can press and look at uh, detail over the last hours. We've got altitude, um, and we'll talk a bit more about elevation. Heart rate, if I put this on my wrist, it would measure my heart rate. doesn't me measure continuously, but samples. Also, my stats for the day. I haven't been for a run yet, but you can see bottom, uh, bottom uh, uh, left, I've got my steps calories somehow thinks I exercise for three minutes then back to the there's uh, back to the watch face now uh, in terms of operation there's no touch screen here we have uh, three buttons if you will um, the top button is the backlight uh, the middle button is our digital crown so in workout mode you spin that um, and go to your different screens it's very easy to operate Unlike the Apex, which was located up at the top, it's in the center. Um, I've had no issues as I did with the Apex with inadvertently uh, pressing that and, tr and spinning it when I didn't want to. It's really well executed. And I think partly because it's, it has more of a standoff from the, from the bottom of the watch. The bottom button is your back button when you're, when you're uh, out of workout mode, and it's your lap button when you're in workout mode. Very easy to operate. No buttons on the left side. So um, one of the issues I had with the uh, earlier um, Apex was the heart rate sensing. Well, here it's a completely new module. So I'm going to put the Apex up next to it. Maybe we can see both of them at the same time. Uh, so we have three LED, three larger LED lights versus two, what looks like two on the apex. Uh, plus, at the bottom there is the pulse oximeter, which uh, is supposed to help you with altitude acclimatization. I haven't been at altitude yet, so I haven't been able to really use it. But um, the overall fit is really, really comfortable here. Uh, these big watches are often a challenge to sleep with. And I've had zero zero problems sleeping with it at night. Uh, the strap arrangement has a clip, and it's easy to remove, easy to return. A little hard to do when you can't see, but there you go. Uh, very uh, similar to what Garmin does. The charging is here. Uh, you can charge on the run. Not that you would need to, because one of the key key features of of the of the uh, Vertex is its amazing battery life. Um, the spec is 60 hours and I've been able to confirm multiple times that you'll get at least uh, 57 to 60 hours of battery life in best mode with wrist heart rate uh, running uh, concurrently. So it's really an amazing um, battery life. I think it's the leading one in best mode. For example, the the Forerunner uh, 945, which I'm also testing uh, in best mode, gets about 30, 32 hours in my testing. So you'll get incredible battery life. In terms of the GPS accuracy, it's uh, literally almost to the second identical to the Forerunner 945. Uh, every split on measured courses uh, ticks off uh, just this, almost exactly the same. Um, wrist heart rate was a challenge with the Apex. Um, and yes, it's warmer weather now, more humid, so there's more blood flow, but I've had uh, really no issues with the wrist heart rate. A little high in the first few minutes, but not nearly as high or with long stretches of um, inaccurate readings as I had in the with the um, uh, the apex and software has improved the the apex so to operate the watch 
uh, and to get into the screens, you'll note here I'm spinning, but nothing is happening. That's because I have the auto lock set. Now, if I hold down the digital crown, I've unlocked the watch. And now we can look at some of the um, the data screens that are available uh, in everyday use. Here's kind of your daily activity. I haven't run today, so there isn't much showing. Uh, you have also your heart rate. And if I had the watch on my wrist, it would measure my heart rate. If I press in, I can scroll through a heart rate over the last several hours. It doesn't sample 24 seven. The bottom right button is the back button. So if I press that, I come back. It also is the lap button when you're in workout mode. The top button is the um, backlight screen. In terms of uh, readability, on the run, I have it set up with a white background and black. I'll show you that in a minute. And the readability is excellent, even with sunglasses. Although I do find in watch mode, uh, in dim light, it is kind of dim. In terms of the altimeter, which I'm showing you here, same idea. You can press and then see your altitude over time. I'm finding that uh, it's running a bit high uh, compared to uh, reality. Uh, I've, uh, I'm at... Um, I found generally about 30 feet high. I know there's a, a firmware update that just took effect that I'm going to test, but it was it's 30, 20 to 30 feet high here, very near sea level at 30 feet, and also was 30 feet high, um, higher than reality when I went up Mount Washington in New Hampshire here at 9, uh, 1,917 meters or 6, um, 6288 feet it was it was uh, showing me 6325 not a big deal but uh so i'm looking forward to further testing of that uh you have a, a barometric altimeter again you can press and see hourly detail um you you can you can also uh, see your messages and your notifications i found the messages and notifications generally are, are uh, quite complete it's not just the the title here um so it's um, it, there are other features here that are important to note uh, in terms of um, the durability of the watch. First, it has a diamond-like coating on a sapphire crystal. It has a titanium bezel. It weighs 76 grams, so the same as the much more expensive uh, Garmin um, 5 um, uh, Phoenix um, titanium edition. We're at a $600 watch here. Um, it also it also has a, a, I haven't seen such a rating, but a 150 meter waterproof rating. Um, not sure we'll ever need it. Um, it's called out as having a better battery life in extreme cold conditions or very good battery life in extreme cold conditions. So it's really a very durable watch. Now, it's a big watch, you know, fairly thick, etc. But I found it extremely comfortable on the wrist, uh, much more comfortable than a Garmin Phoenix uh, 5X. I'm able to sleep with it. It measures sleep uh, very accurately um, through the app. Um, now, when you you have a whole bunch of different watch faces, I, I've stuck with the default one. And if you use your back button here, you can scroll through on the right there. We have, we have battery uh, level uh, um, showing now. You can th scroll through your various stats. So um, in terms of other uh, mountain-oriented features, there's a grade uh, percentage uh, data field that you can use. Uh, there's the pulse oximeter for altitude acclimatization. So Chorus has really targeted this watch to the big mountain, but as a running watch, it is, it is very, very, very excellent. Uh, it has all the data fields you could want, um, including cadence, uh, all kinds of pace, uh, heart rate. Um, so it, it, it really lacks for nothing in terms of data fields. Now its app is very basic. It's very good. Um, it, and I'm gonna show you here uh, uh, what a, um, a workout looks like. So if I press the digital crown, here, here, here are our various sport modes and they add uh, several including mountain climb trail run uh and i believe uh to uh what you get on the apex but if we go up here uh we can we're going to go to what where the the history is which is in what uh, coros calls ai trainer and it's showing since i haven't run today that i'm fully in the green 100 percent 
cupboard. They call it stamina. And during runs, you can actually see your stamina uh, change as you, as you, as your heart rate and so on, uh, as you're working along. So let's take a look at a a run here. If I can see far enough to actually pick out the one I want to show you. So this is your history. Also, of course, on the app. So this is my usual run. Um, I actually ran it in the Nike uh, Percent Next. And this is what you'll get in terms of statistics. At the time, I needed 14.6 hours to recover. There's my pace, my average heart rate, cadence, total ascent and descent, and stride length. So quite complete, and you'll see the same kind of material on in the app, as well as, of course, a map of where you've been. Um, you can also navigate with the watch. So uh, let's, I'm just going to show you how it how it works on the run. So let's pick let's pick uh, run and um, settings navigation settings. So we can pick a um, breadcrumb type uh, situation. You can see it's it's a red line on black. It quite frankly is very hard to see on the run. Um, but um, what I did find is the off-course, on-course signals were, uh, again, as the GPS, almost identical to the Garmin and uh, superior to a Sunto 5 I was testing at the same time. So I noted that both, um, in both cases, uh, uh, with, the, with, with our, our verdicts here and our um, Garmin 945, I was alerted about... Um, 65 to 70 feet when I was off course. Um, and I think that's kind of what you really need with a breadcrumb type navigation uh, when you're on the run. When are you off course? So we could activate the run with a course, so we'll pick it. We hit, uh, we wait for GPS to acquire. I'm under cover here, so, uh, so I do have a signal. You can see our battery's at 78%. Um, and we start our course it's uh, no heart rate. So once we're in our course, uh, we get the elevation on the run. I think we auto pause there. There we go. You distance. I've set these. Uh, you can set up all your data fields extensively in the um, in the Coros app. There's no website here. So it's all done in the app. So that limits a little bit all the data you can see. But you can see you can get, uh, this is what I happen to have set up, but you see you can get quite extensive uh, data fields, really as extensive as anybody's. So we can exit out of this. We, we always use the dial to move, you can see. Finish, it was less than a minute. So we can come right back out. So, um, uh, in summary, uh, the big story here is GPS accuracy and battery life. Just to give you a rough idea of the kinds of things you can do with this watch. Um, when I got it, I had 94% battery. Um, I used it for 20 days straight. Uh, in that time, I, had, I was a bit injured, but I had 13 hours worth of uh, running with GPS and heart rate and I only used 77% of the battery. So what does that mean in an adventure context? Well, uh, I'm estimating you could go about five days of GPS and heart rate, 10 hours a day, and still have uh, battery life left. Uh, the spec for, um, the spec for um, uh, everyday use is 45 to 50 days, so that's, uh, you know, that's um, with no no workouts included, but notifications. Um, I, I I was able to demonstrate that. Basically, you use about two percent battery per day if you're not uh, or per period of time if you're not working out. If you're working out, uh, you you use a, a less than two hours, twenty two percent per hour. So this is really leading battery uh, battery performance. So. It's a $600 watch. Uh, obviously, it's a premium kind of watch. Uh, it competes with the Garmin's of the world and the Suntos. Um, it's a really strong player. Um, does it have all the bells and whistles of 
back end, no, but those things uh, uh, can be added over time, so we'll see what Coros does. Um, compared to the Apex, uh, which is over here, Coros's other other watch um, also has a titanium bezel, also a sapphire crystal. It's thinner, it's lighter, but it, it, it isn't quite the looker. Um, and it doesn't doesn't have uh, the pulse oximeter or the incredible long battery life. I, if I recall, it, it its battery life is still a massive 35, uh, 35 or so hours versus the close to 60 here. So if you're in the market for a GPS smartwatch that's adventure ready, super rugged, uh, the Coros Vertex is definitely one to put in your consideration. It's a great looking watch. It's comfortable. Battery life, you just never think about it. It's accurate. So it's really a, a great new contender in the game of uh, the GPS smart watches. Thank you very much for watching. We're going to have our full written review very soon here on Road Trail Run. I'll put a link in the YouTube. Please subscribe to our channel and follow Road Trail Run. Thank you very much for watching.